Welcome to the newest episode of Beer Chai and the Future, folks. What are we talking about today, Mike? Today, we're going to talk about augmented reality. So AR Ooh. and how it can be useful in the landscaping industry. Yeah, yes, that's right. So when you think about augmented reality, I mean, I think about like drinking and like my reality getting augmented and seeing stuff. Um, <laughs> what did you think about? <laughs> um, I think about it a little bit differently, maybe a little, <laughs> little more technical based. Uh, <laughs> but that's a good example. <laughs> Your goggles, right? Is, yeah, is, that's right. Is, is something that is absolutely augmented reality. <laughs> uh, but but in this case, I think we're talking about overlays that come through some type of technical window. It could be your phone. It could be heads up display glasses or a heads up display windshield um, that displays some type of, of data over top of the reality that is in front of you. Yeah, and I think today we see it in a few different applications. The most prominent of them, them is probably the military. I've seen the F-22 in, not seen, but like in the movies and on YouTube, the F-22 and the F-35 displays, like the helmet they put on, it's got like uh, targets coming up on it. It's got like, oh, where the guns is gonna shoot. I mean, that's what I have seen it like used most commonly in any other applications you've seen it in. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a great example of real world application. A another application is in gaming. So you see a lot of statistics about what is happening in your game on the screen that maybe isn't directly related to what your character is doing at that moment. But but that's another good example of, all right, here's your life bar or how many coins you have or the mini map in the, the corner. All those are good examples of what a heads up display can can do. 100%. And thinking about products in the market, what have you seen out there like that's on the shelf right now? So on the shelf stuff in the market, I, I think is a little bit difficult, at least in our industry, where we're seeing it is more in like production lines um, where people are wearing the glasses that show them what they need to repair or which bolt goes where. Um, so that training manuals are basically digitized and then overlaid on top of the actual equipment that they're working on so that it can teach people how to do maintenance or to put items together in a production line. Interesting. So I just uh, ran a quick search on Amazon about, you know, augmented reality glasses. See what pops up. It's like audio glasses with Alexa. Wow. My there's, there's more out there than I anticipated. I, I think a, a good example of this from the past was the Apple glasses that didn't do anything. They kind of petered out as quickly as they, they came into existence. But Apple is bringing those back again. Um, so I, I do know that that's on the horizon as well. Oh, this is probably just dog shit i mean 41 dollars. Yeah. it's not it's, yeah that can't be, <laughs> not, can't not, be right 13 dollars. oh that's from that's those from, are just sunglasses yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that look good yeah man i think uh product wise i've only heard about uh microsoft's follow lens being used more um in the office environment where designers are maybe collaborating with each other or um, doing meetings remotely and you know, these are the applications they talk about in their annual conference that they do for the product release. It's it's anybody's guess, like, what's the experience like using these things? I mean, nobody really knows what's going on. Yeah, I, I think that's going to be the challenge at first is, first of all, I, it's going to be somewhat of a distraction for our industry, right? I mean, we've got people using dangerous equipment or driving trucks if we're talking about a, a windshield heads up display so it's it's going to be an adjustment at first for people to kind of deal with that input that they're they're not used to and still stay focused yeah oh hang on i searched for follow lens also i want to <laughs> pop that up on the screen four thousand dollars it's not exactly cheap 
So I think that brings up a good point, too, is this technology is very, very expensive right now. And therefore, I think that is going to push back its implementation, especially in our industry. We can't afford to outfit all of our crew members with $4,000 lenses. So I, I think we've got to kind of wait for the cost of the technology to drop a little bit before it really takes off in implementation. $4,000 from some glasses, that means a windshield is probably ten dollars or $15,000 with uh, augmented reality in it. And listen, we take <laughs> rocks to the windshield like it's nobody's business. <laughs> so <laughs> we can't afford to be replacing a bunch of heads-up display windshields at ten dollars or $15,000 a piece. Yeah, but imagine this this being a training mechanism in in the office like you're talking about the future right now and uh, this is a game changer when it comes out folks in the field being able to interact with a heads-up display and um, not having to like go to their phones they can pass off instructions to that display to take photographs just report on what they are seeing and maybe just you see how scientists document stuff when they're working on crazy experiments in Spider-Man and Avatar. And so they keep vlogging what's going on. There's like this, this camera that's always on that's recording stuff. I think that that's a great way to uh, sort of take stuff from the field and transfer it back into the office. And I mean, this is just talking about maintenance right now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think you're, you're so right on the training piece and what it can do for not just people in the office, but people in the field. Because a lot of technology that we've talked about so far has really been for the management level. This type of technology gets technology down to the crew level. And it can do things like, let's say you have a new crew member yeah. and you give them a pair of, of AR glasses and it can walk them through the property. It can also do things like identify plants. It can identify weeds. So uh, let's say you give glasses to the guy who is, is weed spraying. It now identifies which weeds should be sprayed, which things are actually plants, and which weeds need to be pulled because they're too tall. And, you know, it's not going to look good if you spray this weed and now you just have a, a three-foot-tall dead weed there. So... The, the ability to coach people in the field is dramatic. And, and like you said, it's not just what they see, but I'm sure that there's going to be an earpiece associated with that. So, and a camera. So an ops manager can remotely train their crew by pulling up what that crew member is seeing and being able to talk them through a task not being on site. And so one of the main functions of an account manager is to train their crews so that they perform safely with good quality and good efficiency. But training takes a lot of time when you have to drive from one site to another and you know spend a few hours with a crew member, then drive to another site. So we can remove the necessity to drive out to a crew member to be able to coach them Imagine how much more impact an, uh, an ops manager can have in a day and how many more people they can touch in a day just by being able to pull up and talk to those people and see what they're seeing. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of handholding that happens on site and a central smaller team of operations manager can run on-site operations way beyond what they're doing right now. I think, to your point, driving takes a lot of time, for sure. And seeing what the crew sees on site can help you start the new guys faster because, I mean, they have questions all the time. And even they can walk up to their crew leader to ask it, like, everyone's got their own stuff to do on site. It's like, you need someone central. Yeah, absolutely. And think about that. So we talk a lot about how there are gonna be different roles in the industry. Yeah. So now we've got a centralized trainer who can speak bilingually, uh, you know, Spanish or English or That's whatever right. your crew members speak and sit in front of a computer, see what they're seeing and actually train them and, and say, all right, you're doing a good job or hey, turn to your left, don't forget that tree over there. 
and and then immediately be able to click out of them and click into another crew member and continue training with with somebody else all without moving and the power behind that to be able to hire somebody who is specifically good at training and have that be their own focus because operations managers have a lot of other things going on they've scheduling. got you know equipment to move around sc- scheduling all of that um, and, and not every ops manager is a great trainer, but every ops manager has to be a trainer at this point because they're responsible for their crews because it's impossible for one person mm. to get around to all the people. Indeed. I think it's, it's, it can also be a very cool tool, uh, to sell the maintenance, uh, job, even like for design and construction it's very obvious. Like you have a reality in front of you and you're like, Hey, it's going to change into this new reality. So we, we are seeing that being used already. I mean, there are a lot of design programs right now that will allow a, an augmented or a virtual reality walkthrough. And so I think that's, it's a good distinction to, to make that virtual reality is completely made yeah. up, right? Uh, it has nothing to do with what you actually see in front of you. And a, most of the time, your senses are completely blocked from the outside world in order to create this virtual reality with, versus augmented reality, which is you hold your phone up and you see the reality through your phone, but something else. Amazon actually has a good example of augmented reality. If you go to purchase a piece of furniture, you can actually place it in your room using augmented reality to make sure that it's going to fit. Oh, yeah. This is what you're talking about? Yep. All right. Yep. So you can place different objects Shoes. in your home to make see to make sure that it, it fits with your decor or fits in the place that you're you're looking to put it. So this is this is an excellent example of how it's being used already. And and again, there are also uh, landscaping applications of this that will allow you to drop plants into specific areas when you're looking at it on your phone. Yeah. I think we saw an example of this at the Lawn and Landscape Conference. It was called iScape or something, or doing something to it. Uh, you'll see, yeah, he's placing a palm tree there. Yeah. Oh, by the way, not being sponsored by iScape at all. Like, just, just remember. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think you're right. I think, oh, I have nothing to say. <laughs> I was just thinking. <laughs> so on the other side, uh, let's, so when you start monitoring cr- crew very tightly in the field, like you're seeing what they are seeing, do you think it's going to cause like fresh labor issues? Is it going to cause them to unionize and stuff? Or like the uh... crew program is so much in transition, it's never going to unionize. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think that, I mean, unionization of crew members could be an entire conversation. Uh, so let's let's not even <laughs> touch that piece of it right now. I, I think what we can say is that in some ways, it may be viewed as Big Brother uh, looking yeah. over their shoulder a little bit. And, and there's already a lot of that happening with cameras in trucks. So I, I do think that that is a valid concern that needs to be addressed. But I think once we explain the why behind it is we want you to do better. We're not pulling these these video feeds up and we don't have, you know, a wall of monitors where we're just watching everyone's video feed waiting for somebody to, to make a mistake. I think the conversation has to be, listen, we want you to do the best work that you possibly can. We want you to be upwardly mobile, to be able to be promoted and to learn more things at a faster rate. And that's what this technology enables. It enables faster learning so that employees can be higher paid because they have um, retained more tasks. 100%. So, you know, it's a future item. What's your expectation on like when we can see it rolling out? I think that honestly, this is something we won't see until the five to 10 year mark and and probably seven to 10 years. We might see some small iterations of it start to work its way into the industry in three to five years. But like I said, this is a very, very expensive technology at this point. And that is going to be the limiting factor is 
$4,000 for a pair of glasses that could easily take a, a rock from the weed eater right to the face and shatter them. In, in addition to the safety behind glass shattering in people's eyes, there's, there's a lot of concerns there. So I think between cost and safety, it's going to be five to 10 years before we really start to see it approach our industry. I think maybe in vehicles, like I, I think once Tesla <laughs> starts putting heads up displays in, in their vehicles uh, as a windshield, then, you know, it'll start to implement to the rest of the world a little bit faster. But I do think it's just going to be a slow adaptation. I think from the Amazon angle, so what you're saying is is totally on point when we are talking about new glasses that you're putting on and like they are giving you augmented reality. But the way Amazon did it was they just took the smartphone and they're like overlaying the camera feed with like new stuff. And I think that's that's sort of already here in a way. And we might actually get to see that faster. Like Pokemon Go was like this huge application that went all around the world. Um, and I think on site, like imagine an account manager uh, walking on site and he's like on his phone, he's seeing all the service issues that he had like sort of tagged on the map before. And they're like sort of popping out and he's like, oh, this is where it is, this is where it is. And so you've sort of moved down from a top down view of the map to like a more uh, like in front of you, this is where it is and like probably more intuitive and smoother and probably closer to the present. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. I mean, like you said, there, and we've talked about, there are applications that are available already that it is integrating AR into our business. Um, I think the training aspect of it to to where it's wearable tech is, is probably farther off. But you're right. I mean, there's no reason. Another good example of how this technology can help us is plant identification and how or when to prune certain plants. And so I think we're, we're already kind of there, but imagine and, and you're holding up your phone to a plant and it's saying, all right, this is the shape <laughs> that you should make it into. And this is the time of year that you could you yeah. should cut it because maybe blooms are on old wood. So you don't want to yeah. cut it, you know, at a certain time of year or it blooms on new wood. So let's, let's cut it back hard in the winter time. So I, I think those pieces of the puzzle are, are here and just waiting for somebody to create it and put it into existence. But I think that's a lot easier than the wearable tech or tech in actual vehicles. 100%. So, Mike, how do you feel after doing the first episode that you just winged? Dr. Wind. I love it, man. Actually, I think this worked a lot better. <laughs> I think we had some great points. Uh, definitely some things to, to go back and research a little bit so that we can throw some good, good data up onto the screen. 100%. But otherwise, yeah, this was this All was right. Great. Thank you so much for listening in, folks. We'll see you next time. Thank you.